right, well, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Julianne Peterson, and I'm with an I'm with Old Capital Lending. I am a premier provider of debt, and we really specialize in multifamily. We'll do the other asset classes, but we really are specialists in multifamily. We've closed 6,000 deals. Last year, we closed 1.2 billion, and there's only eight of us. So happy to take a look at any of the deals that you're looking at or wanting to get involved with. All I need is your T12, your rent roll. If you've got an OM, which is your offering memorandum, send that along with your underwriting. Uh, so what do we do best? We do multifamily. And so I started Zoom at eight every Tuesday night about almost three years ago. We've closed 10 deals. And many of the people that have done the deals come regularly. One is here. Kenneth's here. Oh, Ryan is here. We did a deal. Who else has done a deal with Old Capital? Uh, J Jim and I have done a deal. Jim and I are doing another deal coming up in Baton Rouge. So listen, this is a great, great community. We learn, we network. It's really w worth it. So thank you for those of you who've made it a regular thing to get on your calendar every Tuesday night at eight. So uh, Kyle Schubert, you guys are up for some really fun stuff. And as you're getting to understand multifamily and how do you figure out where you want to go, there's lots of things you need to know about a particular market. How do you find that? You can do it by yourself. It can take a lot of time. You can go to Real Pages. You can go to Yardy. You can go to CoStar. It's all there, but it takes time. Okay. And when you're looking at a bunch of different markets, this can be time consuming. And, you know, Kyle saw an opportunity that maybe he could make it better for all of us. So tonight, Kyle Schubert is here. He began his career in real estate in 2018. He made his real estate purchase on a house hacking project after finding real estate through Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Kyle originally came from the aerospace industry as rocket systems test engineer. In fact, some people call him the rocket scientist of, of real estate. So since his first house hacking project, Kyle pivoted into actively and passively investing in commercial real estate at, throughout the United States. So Kyle found out very quickly that his strengths uh, lie in his abilities to analyze data and real estate properties. So Kyle founded Vertical Pivot Real Estate Analytics LLC in 2021. So brand new company. His company focuses on achieving the vision of bringing the power of information back to the retail investor. He uses this, his background in engineering to lead teams to develop software used by clients of Vertical Pivot. Listen, Kyle lives in, in Washington State on the West Coast where, you know, it's sometimes hard to find multifamily, but he's looking in other places. And when he isn't working on his next multifamily deal, he enjoys outdoor the outdoors hiking and rock climbing and biking. So tonight we're up for a real treat to hear about your new software program that you have worked tirelessly on. And we met in uh, at the Rod Khalif's uh, conference back in December, and I was amazed by what you have gotten yourself involved in. So I want to welcome you. Kyle Schubert, welcome to Zoom at 8. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing, Julie? I am great. Now, if you are really the rocket scientist, you may need to get the background that Alan Morrison usually has. Where's Alan? Is Alan in the house? There he is. Look at you. You're, you're up against the other rocket scientists over there with his space. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over to you, Kyle. But before I do, if you guys would give uh, all your attention, if you move over to the right hand side, uh, the top right hand, there's a view button, there's little, uh, little squares, bring it to speaker view. And then you get to see Kyle, his beautiful face. And then Kyle's going to uh, talk about why he came up with this, what is important, and uh, he's going to show us some of the software programming. Uh, before we do that, if you need to leave 
and you want to take with you the golden nuggets of everybody's contact information, go to the chat. If you, if you don't know how to do this, open up the chat box after you put your information in. There are three little dots on the right hand side. Okay, open it up. Let's all do it together, just like all the teachers do. Press those three little buttons and you get to save the chat. Save it when you're all done so you don't have to keep saving, saving, saving. It'll it'll take with you can take everything with you when you leave. Okay. So Kyle, you are in charge. Welcome again to Zoom at eight. We're super excited to hear from you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. And I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, and so just a, a couple of quick things I wanted to add to the introduction. Um, I'm really excited to get to know you all and um, I think that one of the biggest things when I was first getting into this space in real estate investing is that um, there's a lot of rules of thumb that people use of like, this is why a market is really good to invest in, or this is why this particular market's better than this other market. I really like the idea of data. I'm a data hungry person and my, my background in engineering and software mechanical engineering um, you know, help me think through risk postures of, you know, a real estate asset in those terms of terms of data. How does this particular asset or this particular market compare? Um, so with that, um, I'm excited to jump in. I'm going to present my screen, Julie. Sure. You're, you're ready to roll. Sweet. So let me just do this view and we'll go from here. So like Julie said, um, I'm the founder of Vertical Pivot Real Estate Analytics, LLC. Um, and so today I'm going to be going over um, kind of real estate market analysis tools, as well as, you know, how does one even figure out what's a good market to invest in? And th there's a lot of different ways to interpret, um, but we can go under one methodology. Um, so I'll just hop right in. Just one disclaimer I want to send out to everybody is that um, when when it comes to looking at any markets to invest in, um, definitely consult legal, tax, investment, or other advice. I'm not an expert here by any means, um, but I want to be able to provide the best um, source of information possible, but each investor should make their own inquiries or consult their own advisors. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So kind of talking about um, you know, a little bit of the background of why this, um, this venture and focusing on why vertical pivot in the first place. Um, and I, Julie mentioned about it a little bit, but I think one of the biggest things um, that our mission statement really revolves around is knowledge is power. Uh, and I'm not going to go through every line by line of this presentation, but the, the key things to take away is that there's, is very easy to make a uh, mistake that could be pretty minor in terms of real estate, but some investment decisions, depending on what kind of a mistake it could be, could cost millions of dollars. Um, and we wanna make sure that, um, that our clients that are involved in any investments with us or even any um, software that we use, that we arm our investors or arm the people are looking at these deals with the most information possible. But we, we also do this by trying to figure out what is the easiest way for us to get that information to our investors or to our users and help accelerate their financial goals. Um, Cause all of our time is obviously incredibly valuable. Um, and we want to make sure that um, anybody's time that's focused in looking at a particular asset or looking at particular um, business plan uh, you do this with the most most possible amount of data that you can have without spending too much time on that. Um, but the the real challenge when it comes to data is not that um, that it's hard to acquire or it's hard to be able to piece it together. What's what's really challenging is that there's a ton of data out there, and I'll go into this a little bit more, but. Um, there's a lot of different cities throughout the United States. There's a lot of different data sources out there. You have the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You have the census. Um, you have citydata.com. Um, there's a lot of resources out there for data, but it can be really challenging when you're trying to culminate the best picture of a market. How do you know what's, what's a great market to invest in? Um, and there's, I'll go into that a little bit more, but I just wanted to 
kind of throw that out there for here. Um, so what are the four major areas of um, market analysis? So there's for particularly for real estate. Now there's a lot of different ways that people can interpret it. There's um, there's a few different investors or um, people out there that have their kind of rules of thumb, but this is how I interpret it, that there's ultimately four major areas when it comes to a real estate market analysis. So the, the first one I can think of is crime, poverty, and, and vacancy. And really that ultimately comes down to how hard is it going to be to find a tenant for the property that um, you're gonna be looking at? Is the vacancy very, very high on average for this area? Is the crime very high for this particular area um, or others? Then the next one is um, jobs and job mix. Like where where are the jobs going? Are the jobs going into an area that um, is growing very, very quickly and are bringing even more population into the area? But it's also considering, um, you know, what's the mix of jobs? Is it pretty heavily towards one particular area? Is it focused towards manufacturing or is it focused towards mining or oil production like some areas in Texas? Um, you know, what, what is that perspective? And the other one that's pretty obvious is the idea of population. How well is the population growing over time? Is it declining? Is it pretty stagnant? Or are we seeing, you know, very, very high growth like some of the areas throughout the United States and the big metropolitan areas? Or maybe some of those secondary and tertiary markets that not a lot of people know about, but are growing in a very, very fast rate. Um, and then the last one is going over house value. So really this is comes really in, in a real at a really important piece in this whole perspective because house value if it's growing at a very very fast rate um, is going to make it a lot more advantageous for people to rent than it is to buy if the purchase prices of these houses get very very large. So that's one thing that's really important to look at in this perspective. Um, so I'll just go on. So we, we understand the market analysis, like what are some of the pieces that go into that? Um, but coming a little bit back to the data, um, when you're just looking at places in the United States, there's over 29,000 places in the United States. Now those are cities, towns, uh, small census designated places. Um, and you, you have to ask yourself the question, you know, what are the good places to to invest. And this is not a really straightforward question, or this question doesn't really have a straightforward answer. Um, there's a ton of different metrics out there. And like I was mentioning earlier, some of it is very useful data. Some of it is not very useful data. And people can, you know, spend a lot of time in one metric, but don't have a, you know, a justification as to why they're going down that particular, particular area. And like I was mentioning earlier, um, if you want to be competitive, uh, you want to be spending as little time as possible. If you're going to be looking at a brand new market and for a property you just found, or maybe you're trying to grow and expand your real estate portfolio in secondary and tertiary markets around your primary property or primary asset. And so in some cases, your backyard um, might be, might be, okay for a particular kind of asset class, but when you're trying to be competitive and look at a bunch of different areas, it, that might not be the best market for you to invest in. You might want to invest out of state or maybe a couple counties over. So the, the question comes to, well, what are your options um, that are currently available? And really one of the primary ways that people do this normally is they would go to the uh, census Bureau, census.gov and download their very, very, very large tables of data um, or going to citydata.com that has a lot, large amount of information. One that Julie and I were talking about was uh, datausa.io. There's tons and tons of data out there that people have access to. And you can pull all these um, different data metrics into a spreadsheet and be able to compare them but that, once again, that takes a lot of time. Um, if you're looking at, you know, 30 different markets, or if you're looking at 15 or 10, um, 
and you're hopping back and forth between them, it can be hard to keep all the information straight, and especially if you're looking for a new market that can be challenging. So, okay, so what what is the solution here? Well, Vertical Pivot Real Estate Analytics created a tool. Uh, there was an older version of it um, that was just just allowed a user to type in an individual city and be able to compare those different market metrics. Um, now, this new version that we just launched this week um, is what we call Market Analyzer V2. Um, it allows near instantaneous ability to view, to view multiple markets up to 75 at one time. Um, it also helps showcase the ability to you know, understand market trends for the markets that you're currently investing in. Or if you're looking at a new market or a group of markets, and you're trying to advertise to your investors um, to show that this is a great investment opportunity, uh, this is a great tool to be able to use it for. Um, we also developed this tool in-house and it uses only trusted sources of data. So we get all of our data from the Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics and other trusted sources. Um, so with that, I wanted to jump right in to showcasing the tool, but before I get too far into that, does anybody have any questions? I do. Um, so it, it, with, uh, with this analyzer, um, is it like, is, is it already set up? I mean, if you're looking for a specific area or a specific market, then everything just pulls up right away or like, you know, um, like whatever, uh, whatever metrics, is, like the job market population, tertiary market and all that stuff, it just pulls up and no need to kind of look into other things. Let's, let's other get into stuff. this, Andy. I can tell you're awesome. very yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And this tool, this is the current platform for the tool that uh, someone can access. So when someone is, wanting to understand like a group of markets. Um, let's just go ahead and start typing them in. So this uh, tool has a type ahead feature. So when you're looking at particular markets, you just hit the down arrow after you type a couple letters and able to look at a few. And so I'm just gonna type in a few that I know in Texas, uh, my neck of the woods, uh, a area I don't recommend investing in. And um, uh, let's pick Austin. How so about, after, can, can we get several of them since yeah. there's a lot of people in the room, Omaha, Nebraska, anybody else? Who else wants to see their data? Fort Wayne, Indiana. Can, can I do Ohio? Okay, Fort right. Wayne. What was the other one? Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, Cincinnati. San Antonio. Houston, Texas. Detroit. Columbus, Ohio. Who else? Charlotte, North Carolina. Anybody else? Salem, Oregon. Salem, Oregon. Let's Tucson, start port. Arizona. Let's port. What's the Arizona one? Tucson. Good. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, so how long is it going to buffer before all this information? <laughs> it can go, it can do, yeah, it can do 75 at one time. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Let's get Louisville, and then let's uh, see what it comes up with. Let's can, move, uh, Louisville. Can, can, yeah. Where do you need, Candace? Hendersonville, South Carolina. I want to see tiny towns. Hendersonville, North South, Carolina? North Carolina. North Carolina, yes. Nope, right okay. there. All right, let's try this. All right. So now all of these cities are loaded. So what you can do with this data is you can sort from top to bottom and then bottom to top. Uh, what were the least performing markets and best performing markets? So when I click right here, it's going to show Detroit, Michigan was the least performing market for these metrics. And we, like I was mentioning earlier, there's population growth median household income growth, um, median house value growth. And there was a couple others on here I'll go over in a second. Um, but I can click this again to see what was the highest performing market. And it 
happens to be Austin and my neck of the woods <laughs> <laughs> for population growth. But if we, you can look at any of these metrics that are on here to see what's the what's the best area to um, you know look at for that particular metric. Um, so for all these areas that shown here, just kind of going down this line, it's the same things that we're looking at. Um, right now, the data is looking at population in 2011 to 2019. The census is going to be coming out with the 2020 data uh, in about a month. They, it was a little bit of a two-year de delay from when uh, they're going to post that data um, because of COVID. But as soon as that data is available, uh, then people can, would be able to see it here uh, in about a month and a half or so. Um, and same thing with meaning household income growth. Uh, it's looking at, you know, how well um, is the income stream increasing for that particular area? And then house value growth is kind of very similar. Um, but all of this is from the, the census for here. And then the median gross rent growth is looking at, once again, 2011 to 2019. Um, this particular data is very interesting because when you look at you know 2020 and 2021 data, mm -hmm. unfortunately, this data is um, when you're looking at it, it's not as current as a lot of investors would like it to be, and that's important because when you're looking at a tool like this, it's trying to paint the context. And we have some things in the work that I don't want to announce just yet, but it's going to be really really exciting that we're going to be able to get. Um, current monthly rents for a particular place within the past 12 months. Uh, but I don't want to announce that just yet, but that's our plan here is to replace this with um, current rents of the past 12 months for different uh, sizes, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. Um, and then finally on the right is something that we've added relatively recently is looking at what's the most dominant industry for a particular area. And so if you go down this list, you might see that, you know, a particular area like Dallas has its highest percentage uh, of market share, which is this number right here in construction. And so that might give you some understanding as to like what the distribution is for the industries in the area. This is, this one in particular is great because a rule of thumb, as some people say, is that um, you don't want to have more than 20% of an industry market share per, for a particular area. So the fact that it might be in construction in Dallas is okay because you would have an 11% uh, market share for that. And then uh, vacancy as- Can you okay. say that again? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can no, you, it's fine. Can you say that again? Because that is a key metric, what you just mentioned. Yeah. And everybody yeah, no should, might want to take a note on that. Yeah, no. So one of the rules of thumbs that people have when it comes to job mix is that you don't want to have a particular market more than 20% of the total market share. Um, and that might give you a clue as to a particular area if, um, if that market were to get hit very hard for during a recession or for some other reason you can feel confident if there's a good dispersion of market share below 20% of any one market. And from a lending standpoint, we're going to want to know that as well, because that will impact your residents. You know, again, if they are all working for ABC company and ABC company has layoffs or closes, all those people are going to be displaced. They're not going to be in your properties. So it's real important to understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you show an example of a of a city that crosses that threshold? Yeah. Let me. Oh, here's a good one that's actually really close. So I'm going to clear. Oh, wait, this. before you okay. before you oh, clear yeah. that, let's. <laughs> everybody wants to see. We put some uh, data out here. So let's look at let's look real quickly. Are there some of these uh, this information that you didn't know? that may be interesting. Salem, Oregon, let's look at that. Population growth is 10%, okay? What are the metrics, Kyle, or criteria that we're trying to aim towards as a, a, a target for population growth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I have this actually currently built in as um, you know uh, hard-coded values. So what I mean by that is anything that's colored in green is um, population growth that was higher than 10%. Um, 
And that's what I would consider to be my rule of thumb of a target is looking at an area that is higher than 10% growth. Um, but everyone has different perspectives on this. And so we're trying to have those to be able to be adjustable. But right now, as a target from 2011 to 2019 is a 10% growth for population. What's is that it second? possible to ask you to populate the, the table based on some criteria, like show me all the metros in Texas, more than 100,000 people? Yeah, that's one of the things that we're currently working on to look at, you know, what are all the metropolitan areas and what are all the cities in that particular metro? Um, and that's one of the things that we're working on. We don't currently have that right now. It's just looking at individual places, but that's one of the things that we're working on. And Kyle, what's your, what's your uh, population growth that you're looking at the 10% um, growth rate? I mean, I know usually the big city, it's hard to hit that number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that is a really, really good point. And with, you know, some of the bigger cities, so like San Antonio, for example, um, actually, let's go down to one of the ones in yellow. So some of these cities, you make a really good point that, um, you know, getting that 10% for those larger cities might be a little bit challenging, like 200,000, 300,000. But that's why we don't use one metric to see the entire story of a particular market. If the market is pretty stagnant, but there's n uh, in population, but there's still growth in other areas, that might still be okay. And you might actually find something that not, is not as competitive going in that market because people are only looking at population. Does that make sense? So looking at Tucson, Tucson has been a very strong market in the past. And it's interesting that we've got yellow, yellow, and red. So mm -hmm. maybe you can bring us uh, some understanding of, hey, this might not be the best place for us to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what I one thing that I've learned is that a lot of people are comparing um, longer time periods. So I think Neil Bawa looks at 2000 to 2019 or 2000 to 2020. So this data is looking at a little bit more in the near field of 2011 to 2019. So as to why a particular market is declining, um, that really kind of comes down to understanding the market a little bit better than than I would. Um, but this is what the data is showing that in the from the census, this is what they're seeing in terms of decl declination of a market. Can you find out for last three years of data? Because Tucson market is very hot, right? I'm mm -hmm. sure the population is going up. So everyone is trying to buy properties there. So mm -hmm. in your tool, can you just do last three years of data? Uh, so currently we're looking at, you know, the past 10 years, but one of the things we're going to be implementing is, um, you know, the one year data. So looking at every single year, the thing to keep in mind when it comes to this data is there are margins of error. So if you're looking at a particular city and you want year by year data, in a lot of cases, when the census goes in and digs into the, the particular market and collects those surveys, there is a pretty large spread when you're looking at a year by year basis. And so that's why we like to see, you know, population growing on the terms of decades, not years. You can certainly look at that, but there's a lot of variability year to year and a lot of margin of error between those. So because that, you know, you, the, the thought process that Tucson is a very, very hot market right now, I'm not trying to dispute that at all. And I think that when you go and dig into the data in particular areas of Tucson, then it might be you know absolutely true. But this is least showcasing what the census is showing for that particular area over the course of a decade. So Kyle, thinking about uh, Tucson, there must be some zip codes within Tucson, correct? So maybe you could take us through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we're gonna be doing is that fortunately the, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics Census and a few other data sources like Julie is saying, do also have data for individual zip codes. And that is one, gonna be one of the key features that we're really excited about to be implementing. So instead of just looking at an individual place or a city, you can look at an individual zip code and see maybe that particular area uh, in Tucson or another area is actually growing way faster than the rest of the market. Because this is looking at a pretty high level view of looking at a bunch of different markets. Um, 
But if you are trying to drill down more and more and more, that's the the items that we're trying to solve as well. Perfect. I've got a comment and a question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, comment. It would be cool if you could make the column headers sticky on the screen. Yeah. Um, and then question: Can you export this to an Excel file? Yeah. Thanks for that comment. Uh, yeah. So. As of right now, the, the data is currently not able to be downloaded, but one of the features that we're going to be adding in here in the very near term is this download data button so that once you have loaded your selection, your comparison, and you want to use this for your own use, um, someone could be able to click right here and then download to either a probably a CSV file or Excel file um, and then can be used. It's one of the features that we have um, that we're working on. And um, that's what we're planning on doing. Perfect. I, I could imagine wanting to export it to Excel and then uh, running another column where I do a my own personal weighted average of the columns that I think are most important. Absolutely. Kyle, okay, I have a quick question. At uh, the bottom, Louisville, Kentucky has no data going all the mm -hmm. way across. Mm -hmm. Could you yeah. touch on that? Because a lot of secondary tertiary markets, well, maybe not secondary, but um you know as as the the market is so difficult as we expand out trying to find a property um how how would we be able to do that with this yeah so this one in particular so i want to make sure it, this is clear to everyone is that this is currently still in development and we have paid subscribers for this um but there's still you know little errors and bugs that we're still working out all the details so louisville kentucky how it's actually defined in the census is a is a longer term than the louisville kentucky that's shown here and that's one thing that we're that i just found out yesterday because somebody else made the same comment to me mm -hmm. um so there is data in um in our database for louisville we just have to change the name to be correct so um, i appreciate the comment very much but we do have data for louisville all right, before we go on, Murtaza, I think you had your hand up. You had a question originally. Did we answer yep. it for you? Yep, he answered it. It was okay, about the perfect. zip code. All right, perfect. And then Vessi, you have a question. Yes, quick question. Thank you, Julie. Um, what is the data source, Kyle, for the rent and vacancy? I'm guessing the demographic and job is coming from census and BLS, but curious about the rent and vacancy data points. Um, so the the rent and vacancy is also coming from the census. Yeah, the census has a lot more data than you think. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Clay Clayton has a question. Are the data columns fixed or do you have other data to compare? For example, can you segment the age of the population growth? Ooh. Segment, I don't, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Would it be break them down in 15 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40? I don't know, is that what you're thinking, Clayton? Yeah, I'm thinking more like is is the report that you're showing is it static or what is it dynamic in the sense of, you know, I don't I want to take out I don't want to see median household household income growth it, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, right? I want to see some other data points. Is this report static or are there other things that you could add and remove from it and mm -hmm. other filters and things like that? Yeah, so that's a great, great question. Thank you for asking that. So that that's currently one of the one of the big comments that we've gotten quite a bit from folks is that we want to be able to look at only things we want to look at and arrange in the way that I want to see them. And um, what we're going to be coming out with um, is this will be the default view. So whenever someone opens up this tool, this will be the default view. But with the addition to turn on and off um different headers or different areas that i don't want to look at this particular category or i don't want to look at this particular category so that's definitely something that we're going to be adding but um to get something to show that was stable um we kind of made this static page but that's definitely something we're working with our developers on no that's fine i mean it's good good data set that you've got going right here so uh, thank, thank you yeah no worries all right so we've got about five to six minutes what else are, would you like to share with us and uh, your closing comments? Um, let me, so what I'll do is uh, 
don't don't fret too hard for folks that the date this data is still there if, if anyone wants to uh, take a look at it later. Um, but uh, there was a question earlier about a particular area that seems to be a very high towards one particular industry. So that one in particular is Midland. Uh, oh. Midland, Texas is known as an oil town. Uh, so if I go analyze cities for that particular market, you'll see that it's not quite 20%, um, but the dominant industry for Midland, Texas is mining, quarrying, and oil extraction. And that's where you see this 20%. Uh, so that it might look on the face to be a great market to invest in, but this gives you a what you could call a clue as to if something were to happen to oil in that particular area, almost 20% of the industries in that area could be affected. Could you show us Colleen? That's going to be a heavy military town. I'm curious what that shows like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do Colleen, Texas. I don't think the census actually um, pulls it out by military, um, if I understand it correctly. So this, this I think, is looking at... Um, would have to double check. But yeah, Kyleen was one of the areas that uh, when I the census data was pulled in, they're not actually showing Kyleen as dominated by military, uh, but this is showing healthcare and social uh, assistance. Well, that's that's because the military report. doesn't have to report themselves as living where they're stationed. So they can report themselves as living where they are from. Right. Yeah, that's, it's not your fault, but that's an important miss. <laughs> mm hmm yeah, no, I, I totally agree. So I think that that's a comment that I've taken from someone else as well, as as well as when I was looking into these markets that, you know, how where's the data for the areas that are dominated by military? Because that does matter if you're if something happens to the base, <laughs> that's a big issue. Yeah, whether it's a shutdown or, or a deployment or anything. I mean, there's right. a lot of different thing, risks that go with military. Absolutely. Yeah, have a great, great comment. Uh, but, does you anyone, know, okay. I, I would just say that, you know, having a conversation with Kyle and saying, hey, you know, this is the metrics, right? These are the standard uh, areas where we're spending our first step in understanding the market. So you're in Ohio, you're looking, you, you say in your head, I want to go to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, but you know nothing. You could dig through the data by yourself but you know that we're looking at these five different uh, criteria. Why not utilize this type of software program so you can get immediate information instead of spending 40 hours to figure it all out? You've got it in a minute, two minutes. It gives you a good level set to then dig deeper. If there is a military base there and they can't get the data, you know there is a military base there. Well, then it, how far is this project from that military base? So these are just getting you into those markets and you have to make some assumptions along the way as well. Any mm -hmm. points to that, Kyle? No, I think you you hit the nail on the head, Julie. I, I think it's a really good point. And I, I think the other piece to this is that you know, conversations like these where people are giving immediate feedback, that's very, very valuable to me. And it's very valuable to um, our current paid subscribers as well as future subscribers is what feedback do people have now that can get in on this tool early um, so that any of these features that people are mentioning can be added so it can help all of us for the the challenges that we all have. So you, you hit it right on, Julie. Um, so, I just, you know, okay. I'm curious, Kyle, how do we a get more information about this and b how do we get a hold of you so that we can um you know if we have got solutions or what we'd like to see to give you that feedback yeah so i i think the best way um so i actually have my contact information right here uh, and i'll also put it in the chat um but yeah if if you you're interested about being potential subscriber for this tool or um, just want to give some honest feedback, please either uh, shoot me a call, text, or shoot me an email. I'm, I'm very, very interested to hear your thoughts. And then um, anybody that becomes um, a potential subscriber to this tool will have access to all the features that we get added uh, at no additional cost to them while we're slowly building up this tool. So I, I have to know, how much does this cost? 
what's the subscription time frame? Can I break us down with that? Yeah, so let me go back to um, this real fast. So for for everything that I just showed um, up to looking at 75 cities at a time and constantly updating um, you know different data sets to make it easier and having additional features. Right now, the subscription is $99 a month, then it can be canceled at any time. So if you get into this tool and you realize that, you know, this is not really for me, um, you know, no harm, no foul. Um, we're still in beta and understand that people want to make sure that their time and their money is going to very effective places. So I totally understand. Um, but that's the current subscription for this tool. And the other thing that I'll say is, any new features or anything new that we add to this tool um, from now until it's fully launched, uh, will it be no additional cost to our beta subscribers? So when we add in current rental data, when we look at how do we search for if there's a military, if it's a military town, all of those features and comments that we add would be at no additional cost to our early subscribers. Fantastic. Your, your most current current data is 2019. Any idea when when you'll bring that forward? Uh, so the census is going to be bringing out the 2020 data in about a month. They said March 7th is when they're going to have the 2020 data available. Um, and that's the current data set that the census has. Um, and we're going to be bringing in the Bureau of Labor Statistics into this data set as well, which is monthly uh, for areas that are above 25,000 people. So when you get the census data for 2020, then will that update all the columns? Yes. Okay. Any questions before we go? I do. So, so what I'm, I'm getting at is the, the basics of a, a market analysis where if we are, you know, if we're, if we're pondering to get target and market or something, then this will be a great tool to kind of like mm -hmm. get the basics of the market. And then, and then if we want to dive deeper into the market, then we would have to do our own research on that. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Current currently, uh, I think something to uh, point out in a, dis in this disclaimer I have hidden here is that this, uh, this particular tool is not a substitute for due diligence in a particular market or a particular area. It just helps accelerate that process. Mm -hmm. And when, when we're going to, what we're eventually trying to get to is looking at an address by address level so that folks don't have to be going anywhere else. But once again, this does not replace due diligence on a property. I, I think you said it beautifully, Kyle, and I, everybody needs to understand that data drives decisions, okay? And in this, in this community, in this environment, in the level of sophistication that some of your investors have, you have to have the data to support the reasons why you're making a decision and bringing them along, okay? You can't be just willy-nilly, okay? So here is a tool that will help drive the decisions that you can show and share with those investors. Um, you know, just like some of the other tools out there, it's critical to understand the information so that you can digest it, make decisions based on that information. It's, it's critical. You can no longer, because it feels good or because it sounds great, it, it all has to be driven by these critical decisions of data. All right. What what are um one more question? What what are these data like based off of uh, based off from? Are they from like uh, census and and um, different um, uh, data platforms that you get it from um, that you kind of apply it to the software? Yeah, no, that's a really great question. I, I won't spend too much time on this because we could have a long conversation just on you know, sources and different data. But the, the, the what the census does is they take a statistical approach where um, uh, an easy way to think about it is the census targets um, housings in all these different places. And the, the average is about one in 484 houses will get, um, you know, someone from the Census Bureau consistently over the course of many years uh, to ask them these questions that help inform this data set. And um, 
The biggest one is called the American Community Survey that the census puts on. And that's where a lot of this data does come from. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics has a different survey that they use to collect um, you know, job growth, employment, uh, unemployment. So there's a lot of data that the government um, puts out there for free and where all of the major data pieces come from. And there's other companies out there like CoStar where they actually call individual property owners. That's their entire business model. Um, and they're very good at that. Um, so, but I, you know, what really matters is the integrity of that data. And that's why I think the, the census is really kind of the tried and true method over the multiple years, what data is available. Thank you. All right. Well, I got to tell you, you know, I know that you're in beta, but the information is critical to everybody. And whether you, you know, want to do it on your own and spend all that time, time is money, or you come to, you know, Kyle's beta uh, software, these are critical tools for your success. So thank you so much uh, for, for bringing this to us. And I'm, I'm excited to watch you and to make this a, a great tool for those new investors and, you know, people that are just trying to look right. at other options. So 